Hi, Ben Scarrett here from BLS Horsemanship. In this video, I'm uh, going to be explaining the difference between direct and indirect pressure. Today I'm going to be using Phoenix to uh, demonstrate a couple little things with you to help you understand the difference between those two types of pressure. So the big reason why I want to um, basically put this video out there is to bring some more awareness around the concept of um, pressure. Because a lot of people I find have um, a real hard time understanding the difference between uh, the different types of pressure you might use with a horse and, and when one type of pressure won't be appropriate and another one might be appropriate. Because sometimes there are situations when you work with your horse where direct pressure is much more appropriate to um, assist the horse or to communicate with the horse in that situation. And in other situations, you might find that indirect pressure is much more appropriate and more effective. So if we can learn to make the distinction between direct and indirect pressure and understand their role and their purpose better, then we can really um, become better in our horsemanship and our horses will thank us for it. <laughs> so the big thing I want to sort of outline here is the difference between the two, the two types of pressure. So direct pressure is anything where we ask the horse to follow a feel. Okay, so a feel is a kinesthetic sense. It's, so when we ask, if we ask the horse to follow a feel, it's anything where he's going via a direct contact. So let's say for example, I'll do a few examples of direct pressure here with Phoenix. Phoenix gonna come over this way for a second. So let's say for example, if I was um, working with Phoenix here, let's say I wanted to um, lead him without a halter here. If I put my hand above his, uh, behind his ears and under his chin like that, and I put pressure across like that, that would be an example of direct pressure because I'm using, a, he's following a feel, he's following the feel of my hands and, the, and the, the pressure on his chin and on top of his, behind his ears there. Another example would be if I was ask, asking Phoenix to back up, if I put pressure here on the nose, that, that's direct pressure. I'm asking Phoenix to follow that feel backwards. Another very common example is picking up the feet. So if I slide my hand down here and I pinch on the chestnut there and I ask Phoenix to pick up his feet, that's also direct pressure. Um, so direct pressure is anything where we ask the horse to follow a feel. Indirect pressure is anything where we ask the horse to follow a suggestion. Okay, so getting a horse to follow a suggestion is more like playing a game of charades. Um, you know, in charades, we have our little charades language. So this means movie, film, you know, this means the amount of words. And there's all these different little body languages that mean, um, so have certain meanings that we interpret from a distance when we're playing a game of charades. So um, when we're working with horses and we're asking a horse to respond to indirect pressure and to yield to indirect pressure, we're, we're trying to teach the horse how to um, move away from pressure at a distance. Okay, so a good example of that would be circling your horse. Okay, another example would be getting your horse to um, back up away from the feed by using swinging a lead rope or doing something like that. So another way we could do it here with Phoenix is say I wanted Phoenix to face up. Now when I'm at this distance with Phoenix, using direct pressure is kind of really hard because he's 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 out of my reach really. So if I what would be more effective for me here would be to use indirect pressure and to see if I can get him to follow a suggestion and move his hind feet across. Okay, so indirect pressure is getting a horse to follow a suggestion. So I'm going to see here if I can use rhythmic pressure and energy from a distance, get him to move those hind feet there, and then maybe I'll see if he'll come towards me. There. So use. Um, indirect pressure. So there I use my body language, my intention. He was reading my intention from a distance um, and that was creating a message which he interpreted and then acted on. So again, understanding the difference between those two things. Direct pressure being anything where I'm getting the horse to follow a feel. Indirect pressure being anything where I'm getting the horse to follow a suggestion. Okay, a suggestion with my body language, with my energy, with um, rhythmic pressure. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and show you a couple more more advanced ways you can play with these two concepts of making a differentiating between these two types of pressure. So one of the ways I could do it on a more advanced level when you've got your horse doing some cool stuff is I could ask Phoenix to back up by the tail here using direct pressure. So I'm putting a little pressure there on his tail and he's coming back off of that pressure and following that feel through his tail backing towards me. 
Now, if I want to do the same thing using indirect pressure, I might do something like this. I could step back here and I could bring my hand up. He's not paying attention. There we go. And let's see if I can get him to follow a suggestion backwards. Okay, so now he's following a suggestion backwards. He's following using his energy, uh, his, his perception to, to, to see my intention from a distance and follow that suggestion backwards. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of the distinction between those two types of pressure. Um, hopefully when you're out there working with your horse, you'll be able to have a few more insights. Um, so go out there and have fun. And um, I'll look forward to catching up with you in the next video. Phoenix and I would love for you to check out more articles and videos at our website, www.funhorsetraining.com. And please be sure to go and um, check out our clinics and any workshops or events that we have coming up in your area. And before you go, make sure you leave a comment and tell us what you think.